Hello folks, we are sponsored by NextGen Power. If you don't know what NextGen Power is about, they provide green energy solutions powered by the sun. So you can save money and reduce your carbon footprint in doing so. Now with raising costs on fuel, we're all feeling the pinch at the moment. You can take control of your monthly costs on your home or business and save up to 70% on your energy bills while doing so. So check it out, their website at nextgenpower.uk, get a free quote. And hopefully we can save you some money. Hello and welcome to the He Doesn't Want a Podcast. I'm first of all joined here today by the head coach at Donegal Celtic, Owen Begley. Owen, how's things, mate? How are you keeping? Keeping well, mate. All good. Just obviously, I don't know where we're coming or going at the minute, like, but it's been a long old season, mate. But we'll finish off of our presentation on Saturday, mate, and then to uh, get a wee bit of a break from it. Hopefully, guy, you know, we're still going. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so, it's, it's now in the mid-June, and then uh, I see you, you still have a cup final to play, don't you, as well? Or Well, the information we've had of the league is, mate, it depends on the appeal. You know, the season may be playing it at the start of next season, because if we if, if it turns out that Coke go up um, from our appeal, they end up getting promoted, then we can't play Coke. Yeah. So we don't know where it's going to work in terms of if Dunlow are going to be reinstated or else we'll be awarded the cup I don't know as I say we're still waiting on answers ourselves depending on what way the appeal goes guys so so it's it's tough because we have four tough games to get to the final mate um, I had to beat St James's I had to beat four Premier Division teams and then not to be able to play a cup final it's it's hard on the lads because obviously I feel like we've earned the right to be ours so just yeah. as I say it's all over the place at the minute mate to be honest and I don't even have, have, have answers for the boys at the minute because we just don't know where we're where we're at at the minute. It's it's just it's unusual to sort of be in this situation, and it's new. I'm new. It's new. It's new to me as well. You know. Yeah, like you can't even tell if your season's wrapped up yet or not. You've no idea, and it's like we say, it's been a long season now. We're now mid June. It's probably going to be near July where you'd be thinking about starting pre season for next year before you might know anything. Or well, we started back last June. Our our, our pre season started back a year ago, and we were obviously training right up the last week. So, yeah. we we just we just don't know. As I say, we all have to wait in this appeal, and the league will probably give us answers with regards to the cup or what way this appeal goes. You know, so it's just as I say, it's it's been a strange season, especially when you put a lot of work into it, and the lads have worked their socks off all year to sort of be in this situation where we don't know what's what's going to happen with the outcome. So it's unsettling and it's madly draining, guy. To be honest with you, but. Yeah. We just have to wait and see what way this goes. Um, we've probably hear word from the IFA today on when the appeal will be, so we'll just probably get get more answers after that. Take it from there. Well, in terms of the appeal, if anybody doesn't realise, obviously you lost three points yourselves after beating Cook early in the season because they put an appeal in for, for something similar to what your appeal is based on yourselves. So uh, taking that away, you, you would have actually won the league on the pitch in the last game of the season when you went and beat Cook away from home. Well, we, we would have won the league on merit in terms of if we hadn't lost them three points, we win the league on goal difference. We have a better goal difference than any team in the league. So yeah. we, we just sort of feel like, you know, I think most leagues should be one on merit. The best team over the course of the season deserves a win. We beat Coke twice, in my opinion, this season. We beat them 3-2 with 10 players. Um, we beat them 1-0 down there. And they're a very good side, um, like a lot of teams in our league. So it's just disappointing that on merit, to win it and then you feel like sort of it's been taken away from you so it's hard to take like to be honest yeah yeah and then the, the appeal itself is there much information you can give on the basis of the appeal or is it just something that you just have to kind of wait and see what the outcome is and then go from there really well as I say we lost the uh, you know a lot of people are obviously on this sort of social media sites don't really know we, we won our first appeal because the league sort of decided to go ahead and obviously take the three points off us without giving us a meeting. So we won the first appeal on the due processes and then they sent it back to our league for to do another meeting. And then we lost that sort of, we lost the, uh, the three points in the meeting with the league. So we went to the appeal of the IFA and lost that um, because of the ineligibility. It was like, uh, of the, they're saying about uh, had her name at the time. And when we were playing Coke, we got a phone call about um, one of their players having the wrong date of birth. That was actually during the game. And then we acted on it and it showed that the player had the wrong date of birth. But we don't know what this du- this duplication process is. We haven't heard of it. I'm sure a whole lot of teams haven't heard what this merger thing happened in 2019. We're we're just as 
much in the dark as everybody else because we don't know what it yeah. is. So we're actually going to the meeting probably the opinion <laughs> knowing what, what that is or who's involved or what happened. So we'll just have to find out what to say in the appeal about that. Yeah. In terms of next season then, obviously you're going to have to take a break after this year, boys, and before you even think about getting ready for next season. So this also hampers next season's preparations as well for Donegal Celtic. It really does, Greg. Because, uh, you know, if you're you're talking about next season, like, you know, there's no way you'd be getting players back in in the next week or two because they only really stopped last week. So I had teams texting about pre-season friendly, different things. And to be honest, our, my main's not in even pre-season or games for for uh, the summer or anything like that there because of obviously this to deal with. So I'm with the presentation, which was meant to happen two weeks ago with the put-it-back. I had the put-it-back last week and it's definitely just going to go ahead this week so yeah. the boys can take a couple of weeks off because a lot of our lads actually had to put holidays and take their breaks and all away for weekends or just off because of this here so it's just been mentally and physically draining and we just have to sort of give the lads a wee bit of a break and then sit down and go for more yeah i'm sure if you's uh if you do have the press cup final but you'll already charge your batteries and, and go a game for it but if not you'll you'll have a well-deserved break mate because there's a lot of games just played during the last 68 weeks as well well we we to be honest guy we played 15 games i think it was 15 or 16 in the space of just it was crazy like six weeks and we went on beating on them you know we we, we have a, we lost two games in the league this season if you take away the three two coke game we lost by Belfast Celtic 1 0 and Wellington Rack. And we've sort of won or drew every other game. So we feel like over the course of the season, we've been the best team. And it's just a lot, a lot of effort and a lot of boys put a lot of work into the last six weeks and did what they had to do. So, yeah, it's just a well deserved break from everybody. Um, even the players, the management, and everyone else. And the, the lads have been brilliant, all the management staff and everybody else, Big L, and obviously Carsey, Paul, and even the reserve management. So, yeah. Just we we're just now relying on the outcomes, but we just feel that that it was just to not get a cup final. We've never heard of a cup final being played the next season. We have felt that we should have had a right to be be playing in a cup final, and for that to be taken away from us is it's hard to sort of come to terms with, especially when you've worked hard to get there. When you have to be at St James's in the semi final, who are a very very good side to get there, then I feel like it's sort of um a bit of a, a setback for us, you know. Yeah, it always feels like after all this hard work, it's a bit of a sort of lead balloon. It's a bit of a letdown. Like it's, you can't even enjoy the what is achieved because of what's going on. Well, we feel like we could be going. You're going from maybe being able to win a league in a cup to possibly not being able. You, you might not win a league, or you feel like you know you're not going to get a cup final because you could go possibly from winning two trophies to winning sort of none, or maybe playing a final next season. You know, so. Yeah. Like it's hard to take, but as I say, I've always you just have to take it in the chin and as I say, go again. And yeah. see, I'm sure like some myself and all the lads will do that. You just have to roll up the sleeves and um just focus on next season. It's football, mate. It has its setbacks every week, so it does as you know. So it does. Uh, I mean it's but the problem with this league is I think there's four new teams in this league next year. I think this league there's a lot more games. And you count the like the the amount of league games and your intermediate staying on cup because we got to the last eight of the intermediate cup this year. So, yeah. and then you have three cups in our league, you know. So, we're playing near enough of the same amount of games as sort of Premier League teams. You're talking 50 odd, 50 odd games yeah. a year. So, it's tough. And that's why you need a big squad. And that's what I think one of the big advantages of us was this season. We had a good panel of 25 players. And that's the only reason we got through it, Gary, or we wouldn't have been able to get yeah. through the amount of games that we had to play. I think as well, like it's something to point out as well, where there's a lot of teams who are now, because of the Intermediate Cup rule changes and the and Sun Cup rule changes, when there's the likes of the um, championship teams aren't involved anymore, the top Intermediate teams are constantly getting to the later stages of these competitions and potentially going on and winning them. So the further you go in these Cups, aside from your own League Cups, your own League Games, the more games you add and then the bigger a backlog, the back backlog seems to be getting worse every year. And I think the League should be doing something to try and make it less of a backlog rather than rather than add to it by adding more teams into the league and not relegating any teams or taking any teams out of it. It's just going to make it a lot, lot harder for teams next season, so it is. It's just going to be harder because it, the way I look at it is we're, you're talking in the Balmain League of the play, if you play two or twice, you're talking 36 games or so next season alone. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then you've got your cup competitions where if you do well, like the intermediate, I think you have to win six or seven games maybe to get the final of that. And then the Stealing Suns and then the RH Cup. And then we have three cups in our league. So that's it's an awful amount of, of games. And I think that it's okay if you're playing midweek games with clubs that have lights, but there's a lot of teams in our, most teams in our league don't have oh. floodlights to play games during the week. And I think the only way you could do that is if you're playing midweek to sort of take the, the burden the off clubs out, yeah. and the players with them amount of games because that's why people don't realise, Gary, we had six serious injuries, uh, long-term injuries. People don't realise the amount of injuries we had. This year we had two leg breaks with two players do an ACL, one with a, a cruise ship, one with a fractured skull. And then near the end of the season, our boys were literally, you know, just we had, we had about seven injuries last game of the season. It's all down to the playing all these games in a short period of time. You know, yeah. Premier League players who can't do it, you know, so I don't know how they can expect just our sort of lads who are working nine to five to be able to turn around and do that. It's crippling yeah. clubs, you know, with the injury list we had near the end of the year. We were just glad to see it all wrapped up and done. And it's the same for every club, Gary. You know, it's not just ours. Every club's the same, you know. Yeah, we need to protect our players a wee bit more, definitely. Yeah, I mean, player it. welfare, we need to protect them yeah. a wee bit more or you're going to end up just, you know, players are not, you know, it came to the last game of season we played Cope. We had 10 players unavailable for, from injury for that match alone. So we had to bring boys back into that game who hadn't played in four months. So yeah. we had to bring players back and played up on four months just to fulfil that fixture because we're just, too many players were injured. Yeah. Well, mate, I wish you best of luck on your appeal and uh, going forward. And if the cup final gets played or when it does or whatever, I wish you best of luck on that. And uh, I really appreciate you giving up your time to speak to me because I know you've had a busy period over the last couple of weeks. So um, I really appreciate it. And uh, best of luck going forward, mate. Yes, Karen. Oh, um, uh, thank you very much, mate. Cheers, mate. Thanks. All right. Bye. 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 I'm joined here from uh, Dean Bunting from Portadown, BBOB. Uh, Dean, how are you, mate? You all good? I'm all good, yes. Uh, we've been happier now with the season so far, so uh, the football maybe put a smile on the face for a while, yeah. I believe congratulations are in order. Yes, mate, yes. We won the league, so a massive, massive uh, achievement for the club now, so yeah. uh, everybody's well well pleased, you know, with a, with a trophy. Is that the first time you've won Division 1 in the Middlester, or...? Yeah, yes, well, this was an ongoing debate through the club and the committee and all the older hands. So uh, they believe that this is the, the first time that they've won the Division 1 or won a trophy in a very, very, very long time. I think any promotion that has went on through the club um, has went like through mentioned second or third. You know, it's, it hasn't been through um, winning anything. So um, it's yeah. good. They've won cups and things, but now league, the leagues itself. But um, I, I think it's eluded the club for a, a long, long time. Yeah, looking at the looking at your league and you look at the strength of the teams, you, you kind of always draw our junior divisions from the the junior cup when I look at results and you've Cole Island Athletic who won the junior yeah. cup last year. You've you've a couple of our teams there like Sir Bally Orange, Sandy Hill who do quite well in the cups as well. Like so, it's a yeah. very strong league to, and to come out and pop that, I'm sure you're delighted. Oh, we're we're well chuffed. You know, look at this is my fifth season I think now with uh, BB and. With a really, really, really tough start when I first went there, you know, where they'd actually finished in the league in the league previous to, to me taking over. But you know, the teams that you've named along with, you know, like Sandy Hill and Coal Island and your Hill Streets and stuff, they're teams that have that, that have won things, you know, uh, you know, over the, the course of the years, especially your Coal Islands recently and yeah. the likes of Hill Street and things they've got, you know, over over a longer period of time. But to come out on top, you know, over them there it, it, it adds to the achievement of the club. So Everybody's yeah. been well chuffed, and again, you know, with the league in itself and how we came around and, and, and doing it, I think that's been even even better on top of, of things, you know. Yeah, looking at your uh, recent results, I think, but a couple of weeks ago, you obviously came from behind, and then there's a games in hand, and then I seen what was at the last game or second last game of the season, you went and beat Cole Island as well. So, yeah, it, it's kind of just sort of took everyone by surprise almost, sort of coming from behind and then finishing strong. Yeah, well, well, I think we were, we're on top for a, we were on top for a good bit, but we had the games played. So Coal yes. Island was always, and Sandy Hill was sort of a wee bit on the outside of it. You know, there was maybe the, the outside chance, but they pushed everybody right, to, you know, right to the end. I think Sandy Hill's going to end up maybe possibly finishing second, depending on their last game. But yeah. Coal Island was always, you know, coming from behind and they're a dangerous, dangerous team and they've proved themselves over the last, you know, recent years what they can do, especially that Junior Cup win last year was absolutely 
fantastic and it's a real promotion for Division 1 football, you know, so yeah. to finish ahead of those guys and, and to actually beat them in both games, you know, is is a massive, massive achievement for us because to, to be coming away saying you're beating Colleen in two league games is, is a, a great achievement for any club, you know. Yeah, it almost feels like as well that certain leagues, middle stage one of them, coming into mid-June, finishing your season this late isn't really abnormal. It seems to be a kind of a normal thing these days, but it, it must have been a long season for you boys as well. Um, it, it, was, it, it turned into a joke towards the end of training at times, you know, like a, a, it was nearly 11 month season, which, uh, you know, practically if you take out the breaks at the start of the year through the council things and things like that, but um, like it, it just 11 months is, is madness to think of a season. And, and again, we're going into this weekend to finish it, you know, with the obviously the, the cup final coming up. So, um, it's been a long season, you know, and again, another big achievement for us is the fact how thin the squad's been. You know, we yeah. really went through the whole season with like maybe 16 players, 17 at the very most, you know, and it's 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 madness, you know, to think that you can do that sort of thing with, with players, you know, so thin on the ground, but the lads stuck in and done what they had to do and they'll come out on top. Yeah, and looking at the... You could not, not be far off from maybe being the last... The last senior game being played the whole season is Saturday. Like the fact is, the cup final still we're talking about seventeenth of June is is insane. It's like sort of it is, and I think there's a, a cup final on the Friday night, which might be the I think it's the Alan Wilson maybe, or it could be the the one above it, and then we're on the Saturday. So I believe the the next game that finishes everything up possibly in our division is the Sandy Hill game there at home to Ballyorn, and they're playing that again then. To possibly finish runners up in the league, so um, it's a it's a busy year. It was mad, so it was. But look, you'll take them whatever way they come. I don't care if it's a lab month season next year, and you're in the same situation. I'd take it, you know. Yeah. In terms of cup final, how are you looking? How are you fancy yourselves? Or it, it's going to be tough. If if I'm honest, you know, through the whole season, um, out of our own league, Sandy Hill has been the team that has proven the most difficult for us, you know. Yeah. Uh, we've played them, we've played them, I think, three times to put us out of the Ulster Shield um, yeah. in the semi-final at home. It went the extra time and they scored more or less with about five minutes to go. But uh, we've just found them very, very difficult. So I know this Saturday is going to be no different, you know. Um, it's going to be all about our guys and their mentality and how they approach the game is more than anything. Look, we've proven that we can go and beat any team in our league. But there's always one or two teams that just shows that wee bit more difficult to do, and Sandy Hill's a big difficult team to, to play against. So, um, it will it will be a good test, good test for us. And I think they probably feel the us one with the league possibly and the things they got, and, and yeah. uh, we feel we owe them ones because we haven't really we're the only team we haven't beaten our league. So, yeah, we'll cup finals are always strange. It's never usually anything like the league games as well. It can be the best team might not win it, or it's just about getting over the line. Really, yeah. cup final, isn't it? I, that's what it, it's, it's like that all the time. People sort of players get a wee bit nervous and they don't play the natural game. Team set up a wee bit different, so it'll be about getting those first 10, 15 minutes out of the road, and then you'll really see what what the both teams are actually thinking. So it'll be yeah. interesting. Like, it'll be interesting, and it's strange to be playing a cup final at half five on a, on a Saturday evening. So it's all new to us, like. Yeah. In terms of next season, then I'm sure you haven't had much time to think about it. You'll probably not get much of a break either if you're going to be trying to defend your title next season. Well, we're we're hoping on look we've we've applied you know to to go up and we've got the facilities and things they got you know and there's teams over the last maybe two or three years so we're hoping that next year we're playing intermediate football and that's right. the hope you know that uh, it works out that way so the club has worked tirelessly off the pitch since I've been there you know they've always probably been ahead of where we are to level on the pitch yeah so. The, the the goals between ourselves, myself, the the coaching staff, and the committee has always been like intermediate footballs are our goal. So we finished the league, the league winners. We've got our facilities. You know, we've got those things around us, and we think it's just a matter of like we're going to you know we'll get up. So next year we're we're hopefully going to try and push the finish somewhere in good shape in the intermediate B. So that's that's yeah. the hope and the aim. Like it's it's one of the things as well. If you're not ambitious as a club and you're not having those aims, it's very hard to get the players to push themselves yeah. when they're looking to win leagues and you're, you're if you win the league and can't go up but it's it's just it's not as it's not as great a feeling because that promotion that opportunity to do that and then to go and test yourself and compete yourself at a higher level again I'm sure that just pushes the players on even more then yeah it's massive it's massive for players and especially young players nowadays you know they, they, they like to think that they're 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 testing themselves at the at the best levels possible so 
it is really difficult for clubs uh, at our level of football trying to attract players and and even keep players, you know, especially winning leagues, you've got something good about the, the bunch of lads that we, we, we have, you know, so yeah. trying to add to that, stepping up in that more difficult league, you know, it's always going to prove difficult, but look, that's, that's the challenges in football and especially junior yeah. football at the minute, so um, it comes no different to us than anybody else, so yeah, yeah. That's a, you have to relish it. Yeah, I, coach, I was coaching about myself in the Middle League this year and what I found really strange coming from amateur league previously was so many teams are in such a close area, like Port of Down, for example. Yeah. Like you drive down one road to Tanzergy Road, and about three teams on that one yeah. one road, <laughs> and they're intermediate teams, and it just must be it's it's obviously hard to to then retain players and to get new players in, and it's yeah. basically fit survival of the fittest. And if you're a successful team, then players are going to hopefully come to you as well, then. Yeah, well, that, that that's it. You know, like our our biggest attraction at the minute is the fact of. You know how how structured and how well the club's running, yeah. and, and that's that's a credit to the committee and the, and the and the people around that club that's doing it because we 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 can't compete with with things at the minute. You know, like there's a a lot of money in football at the minute. You know, for different reasons and all that. You know, through players and coaches and stuff. And and look, that's that's where football's going at the minute, and it makes things a bit more difficult for people further on down that 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 packing order. But you have to sort of look at different avenues and different ways of trying to make yourself stand out different from all the rest. And our club has been doing that over the last maybe two or three seasons off the pitch. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's came probably to the late at one time, you know, with league champions, we're looking to step up in intermediate football. We've got good facilities. You know, we're a well-structured club. People can see that, you know, and, and there's success coming around the club. And at the end of the day, no matter what happens, things are always bought and won through success and trophies like so. Yeah. That's our, that's our bit we hang on to anyway, yeah. you know. <laughs> exactly. Well, mate, I hope the celebrations weren't too long and, and these boys uh, enjoy a good game on Saturday here in the final. And yeah. If they end up with a double at the end of it, it would be some achievement for the club and it would be some achievement for coaches and the players involved. It'd be massive, mate. It'd be massive, really, really. Like, like we spoke about it, you know, and we've had a few moments, you know, in the change rooms and things like that since it and, you know, in training sessions, just talking about it and, uh, Look, the club's the big winner in all of it. You know, they deserve it more more than most, but the credit has to go to the group of players, you know, to, to go and do what they've done in an 11-month season with a group of 16 people, you know, at our level of football, with people picking up injuries and, and like, you know, weddings and things and weekends away, it's it's an absolute credit to our lads. So, yeah. you know, look, we deserve it, and hopefully it's it's a double we're talking about, you know, at the end of the, the day, but we know it's not going to be easy, but you never know. Cup finals are strange, so... Exactly. Made fingers crossed. That, and best of luck going yes. forward. I wish you all best of luck with the, the club you and yourself much, in general. Thank you very much for coming on. Not a problem. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Cheers, mate. I'm joined here by Connor Kelly from Ballycastle United, who I believe, even though it's nearly July, they've just wrapped up a league title here at the weekend. Yep, just about. Still still two league games left to play as well. So long out long out season, still still more games to play. It's madness when I was looking through your leagues. I couldn't believe how many games you still had to play, even up as far as last week. And then it's just, it's just non stop, isn't it? Like, it's crazy. You know, the last maybe three or four weeks we've been playing Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. I think there was a stage where I think we had five games in 10 days or something like that. And it's, oh, listen, it's, it's great to still be playing football, especially like with the, the good weather and stuff at the minute. Like, it's yeah. keeps you off the beer for a wee while anyway. But, uh, yeah. ah, it's, it's a long out season at this stage of the of the year. Like, how, how did your season go in general? Like, obviously, you have won the league, and, but how did it sort of pan out? <laughs> it was, to be honest with you, Gary, it was that long ago. It's hard to even remember the very start of the year. Like, I think we played our first league game um end of August, start of September, um at home to Cookstown, Cookstown RBL, and beaten three 0 So we started quite well, uh, with a decent run in the Junior Shields. Rosario beat us in the Junior Cup um, on penalties, which was an unbelievable match. I think it finished 3 3 and then went to penalties. And um, and then while well, we were put out of the Junior Shield, we were thumped by Hartleyville 10 0 um, in it. But we were in, in our own domestic cups then. We were in the final of the Stephen Sun Shield and the Constitution Cup, the Chronicle Cup. Lost yeah. both finals as well, too. So from that, we've just been going full steam ahead for the league title. So we only lost lost one league game all so far this year. Um and then had I think two draws. So we've been consistent this year, which has been fantastic for us. Like. 
Yeah, with all those cup runs, but it must have been playing catch up the whole season, and then obviously other teams have points on the board as well. So That's crazy. There was, I think, there was a stage where, from maybe that must have been maybe the start of May, I think we had like seven games in hand at a stage for, yeah. from the some of the teams in the league, which is it's a lot to try and catch up, and then obviously, like you said, you're trying to cram them in towards the end of the season. You're playing Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and. Some of our boys wouldn't be there. Are the, they are the wrong side of 30. There's even one or two yeah. that's the wrong side of 40 as hell as hell. So, uh, it's it's tight enough going for those boys. and It's just great to get over the line at this stage. Yeah, with that amount of games, it just, do you think it's just a strength of your squad or is it strength in numbers? Or? It's, uh, we've, to be fair now, we've we've had a great squad most most of the year. You know, very few weeks, you know, we're, we're, you're struggling for, you know, even getting subs and stuff. I think most games we've had seven subs, you know, with us, yeah. at, you know, I'd say 90% of the time, you know, that the introduction of the five subs is, has really benefited us because we do have strength in numbers there, you know, yeah. especially with the attacking players. And then our reserves done really well this year. They actually, they were, they're promoted now into the league below us. Right. Um, When they were three leagues below us last year, so they were more than Division Two. Last year, up into the morning division one this year, and now they've been promoted into the morning championship, which right. is a fantastic achievement for them lads as well too. Like they put in a hell of a shift, and then once their league was finished, we were able to call on quite a few of the reserves as well to sort of bolster the numbers. A few were, you know, some of the lads are feeling the aches yeah. and strains too. So yeah, because if you players now who are going to be playing next season in the league below you, it just sort of strengthens the whole club overall. Like where you can call on those players, and yeah. not much of a difference in quality between both teams then I'd imagine as well. Absolutely. Like the there's there's quite a few of those young lads that were you know, played the the majority of the season with the reserves and then have made the step up, you know, into the squad with the first team. There's a couple there's there's two of them, you know, that are now not a guaranteed starter for the first team most weeks, but you know, they're they're certainly one of the first subs, you know, making an impact off the bench and you know if they aren't, yeah. you know, starting the game. So it's great to be able to to call on those younger lads as well too that are you know, some of them are, are maybe in their first or second season of, of playing. So, you know, it's soccer up with us as yeah. a second or third sport for some lads too. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's been difficult to probably get our best team out all season, but oh, we've had a few injuries and stuff too. But as you say, the the depth of the squad's really carried us through, especially when you are playing so many games in such a short period, piece of time. Yeah, and then not only that, just what what's the plan for the remainder of games, and then just take a a short break and get back and it again for next season, or do you go to a longer break and just sort of short pre season? Or I'll be I'll be glad not to see any cones or balls or bibs <laughs> anything now for a good few weeks. To be honest with you, it's been it's been a long I'll I'll hold, but I think I think the plan is obviously get these two games played. Um, with our with our, our gala dinner dance now on on um Saturday night, the fiftieth anniversary. So it's We've timed it well, actually, winning our first league title, our first Premier League title in the Korean District League this year. Um, so Saturday will be a good old session now, and then next Wednesday night away to Draper's Town, and then after that, it will be, I would imagine, probably four or five weeks break for the lads. Yeah. Most of them will probably be going and playing hurling. Anyway, so it's say, not yeah. really a break for them as such, yeah. but a couple of weeks away from the football probably won't do them any harm. Uh, at least they're not going to be playing two sports for a while. <laughs> so it makes it a bit yeah. easier. So it does. They can go, uh, and play, go and play two and three hurling matches a week now for the next couple of weeks. So. I can't them work away. You'll be having a break. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, what about the plans for next season in general? Where do you go from here? Obviously, he's really champions. How do you get the boys motivated to go again? Or we've, 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 well, the, This time last year, we had won the Stadium Sun Shield and the um, McKendry League Cup. So we'd, yeah. we'd done a, cup, a domestic cup double last year and then we'd sort of set our sights last year. Our target was to win the league. We knew we sort of had the potential there, you know, to, to put a push on the likes of Calais and Draper's Town, Portrush, Heights, you know, real, Matthew Felt Sky Blues, you know, real good teams. You know, a lot of them have played at intermediate level before and yeah. we knew that the league would be tough, but if we could be consistent and, and get our best players, you know, committed, we, would, we could give it a good rattle. I think that was, you know, everybody sort of bought into that was, you know, the league title. How good would it be? The 50th anniversary of the club, you know, big gala night, you know, Premier League champion. So, ideally, what I would like us to do is 
obviously go and try and retain it, try and win back a couple of those domestic cups, and then probably give the the junior cup and the junior shields, you know, another hopefully get another good run on that and those two as well because yeah. you know the Rosario defeat there and, and on penalties, you know, a fantastic game of junior football. Yeah, but we came out the wrong side of it. So and then the Harryville one as well too. You know, we were really disappointed that day that. You know, I mean, day you can have you can have off days, but the thumping we took that day, I think, motivated a couple of lads. You know, to to go, you know, that this isn't Ballycastle, and that yeah. that that day, you know, really sort of made us sort of take a good look at ourselves and go, you know, this isn't going to be as easy as what we've maybe been thinking. You know, because I think going into that game, we'd I think we'd won maybe ten in a row, yeah, ten or eleven games in a row, and, and I think confidence is high, but I think that just set us up for a, a massive think, fall at that think, stage and then I think after the Harryville game then we went I think we won 11 or, tw- or 12 in a row after that yeah, so, so you know just that one wee blip in the season you know it sort of can derail but yeah you know it, it, would, it would be great you know to get another cup run um, there and obviously try and retain that Premier League title we know that there's I think a couple of intermediate sides coming into the league next year I think to give them some drop down right okay on. Yeah, are going to come in. I think that there's a few teams sort of in that Ballymean Intermediate League or the the Northwest Intermediate League too that have there's sort of rumours that they're sussing it out. You know what sort of standard and things like that too. But the more sort of intermediate teams drop down, like Draper's Town have come in there the last couple of years. Sky Blues a couple of years ago as well too. You know it strengthens our league. Um, yeah. and it makes you know the 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 Corian District League. You know for for a long time was was. You know, just Korean teams, and you know, and and around that sort of area. But I mean, now we've two Cookstown teams in the league. We've Draper Town. We've two teams from Marafelt. Yeah. You know, it's it's a it's a long travel from Valley Castle, but yeah. Ultimately, if it makes the league a stronger, a stronger place to be, then that's sort of that's nice to be challenging too. Is there is there any aims for your own club to go intermediate, or because the league seems to be getting stronger, he's happy <laughs> enough that he's are competing at a good level, obviously. I think I think if we were to, if we were to go you know and make a real good run at the junior competitions um yeah. would be sort of the next step and stone for us. Uh, absolutely, I would love Ballycastle to become to go and, and push for it to be to be playing in the intermediate league. I mean, we did play. It was a, a a good long time ago. I think it was actually before I was even playing. Um, the first team played in the intermediate league. Um, so that's ultimately where we would like to go back to, but. I don't think there's any point in skipping a step, yeah. you know, and going, you know, jump, trying to jump up the intermediate if you're not going to be ready for it. You know, there's, yeah, there's a, the, the, the youth academy's done brilliant work in, in bringing some young players through into the, into the reserves and into the first team. Um, if we can continue that sort of process of getting those young lads up in and, and push and strengthen, I absolutely would love to go intermediate yeah. at some stage. Yeah, and I suppose like you said, well, a couple of years ago, you actually got the junior shield final, with not you? So you were yeah. quite quite close. So you are not going on the door, like, and it's obviously well, uh, a stronger league. So the more competition listen, you get in your own league, then the, the more you can compete against the likes of Harryville, who uh, could beat anybody ten on their day, like sort of could as well. It. So that's it. You know, it's it's on another day. You know, you may only really lose five nil, but you know, yeah. it makes it it's a bit know, of a difference. Know. So listen, we would we would. If you played that game a hundred times over, I don't think you're getting too many more ten nils. But it was just yeah. I've been on the end of one myself. Yeah. Could have went wrong, did yeah. so. Yeah. Listen, we'd, we'd, we'd love another go at Harryville again next year <laughs> at some stage, but maybe in a final or something if that was yeah. if that was the case. Yeah, well, mate, thanks very much for your time, and I wish you best of luck on your remainder of your games. It's mad saying that in the middle of June, but I uh, wish you best of luck on them, and then going forward next year and. Uh, who knows, maybe come across you in one of these competitions. So, mate, so fingers crossed. Thanks very much, Gary. Mate, thank you. Cheers. I'll speak no to you worries. again. I'm here with Ricky Shaw from Antrim Rovers, who uh, is no stranger to interviews, but it's normally in a, a different format with a, the stock cars, I'm led to believe. Yes, that's true, Mark. Uh, a lot of that last year. I was very successful in the racing last year. So, it has its own racing channel now. I speak for TV. So, if a man presents that and interviews you all the time, especially when you're successful, but yeah, it doesn't always work like but most of the time. Yeah, a lot of trophies in that anyway. So uh, you're hoping to carry uh, over yeah, in their yeah. football. The teams under a bit of pressure because I have a lot of catching up to do with my individual ones. Like. 
Right. <laughs> so, uh, mate, it's just a change of pace for you then, because you're used to used to getting so much success there. Uh, with Antrim Rovers this season, uh, how was your season overall? How did it go? Well, I only come back for the start of this season. I took it on again. I've had a few years break. Uh, I won the league, Division 1, with B in 2015. And we got to the Crawford Cup final back then, which was against Bally and Europe, won the treble. Um, we yeah. wanted to go intermediate. We gave them a real good game. We lost that about eight minutes to go, maybe 2-1. We were all equipped to go, and we didn't work set up for it. So sort of the next season after that, everything started. Sort of when you win something, you can't go anywhere else. It all sort of goes down a wee bit. And but a couple of years in and out of different things. And then, like I say, I took a break. I took it over this year. We have a very young side this year. I think our average age, probably 21. Yeah. I'm looking at the league last year, we probably should have been relegated to Division 2, where we finished. But the Palomino yeah. League restructures. So, depending on who's come in, new teams and move, they were left in Division 1. And this year, I would have said it was maybe based on the experience of them, we stepped too far. We only really had, I would say over the season, two games where we let ourselves down, where we were poor, we got ran over, maybe a home game against Ralph Cool and away to St. James's. But yeah. the rest of the season, every game we played was tight. It could have went either way, but unfortunately it went against us maybe when we were trying to chase an equaliser later on. Yeah, and then... So see... Sorry, go ahead. No, we ended up... I, Maybe a couple month, one or two from bottom. I don't yeah. I haven't actually looked at it. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you don't want to look at it. <laughs> no, no. It, the table doesn't lie. It's the way. Yeah, yeah. I've seen this. I've seen this move to amateur league. What what prompted that there? Because obviously been in the bottom the league a long time. And... Uh well, we have been in the bottom the league a long time. Like I say, when I was running, I took over the second ever US team at Amateur Rovers all them years ago, and I brought the yeah. Brown on. They helped me, and then I think they may have got the under 15, 16s. I had my European B at the time, and then I went on, done a, helped out a couple of clubs because I was getting a few pounds here and there. So he took over, done the last couple of seasons with him. Then they got the 18s, they wanted to go senior level. They went into the Ballymena League, he took them wherever I was playing at the time. He asked me, Look, a lot of young boys, will you come back and play with these as captain? So I actually played on that team of, in my early 30s with a lot of 18 year olds, and we come up through the divisions. And, then I'd sort of retired and took a local team. And then he was at me and at me, look, I can't take these things any further. I want you to come back and take them and drive them on. And then we ended up, like I say, we won the league and stuff. And it went from there. But uh, in Antrim, this last couple of years, that league, because I looked at it last year, especially the res- where our reserves played, there was teams dropping out constantly. And yeah. the games were getting shorter and shorter. And now in Antrim, there's a five mile radius, say, from one side of Antrim to Ronaldstown. Saturday morning league's a big thing in Antrim. Yeah. And we have seven Saturday morning league teams playing. And then there's us, Chimney Corner, right beside each other, and then two Ronaldstown teams. Mm-hmm. So the players were starting to leave. Well, that season's over early because the morning league was starting before us and ending after us. Um, I had a few discussions. The reserve manager was yapping at me. And I'd sort of turned around the committee and whatnot and said, Look, I think we need a move here because I'm going to struggle to hold on players. He goes, I know they'll go away and come back. But someday they're going to go away. They're not going to come back yeah. because they're getting more games. You know yourself, players want games. Yeah. So I put it to them and I says, look, you're in charge. It's up to you. You decide. So I went ahead with the application process. I played in that league. That's the one I wanted to go to. I think it's the biggest in the country. Um, I've always wanted to go back into it because you can start and build yourself. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think teams will enjoy coming even to play us. At Allen Park and Antrim because we have a nice, we have a very attractive looking format down there. There's a lot of money getting spent in our main pitch. Next yeah. year, more money in the next pitch because we have a 15 year lease in these pitches. And actually, the brother in law I mentioned, he's the grounds man down there because he's a landscaper. So all right, that's okay. done. And then, like I say, the long term plan eventually would be go intermediate if we get all the right things in place. Yeah, I was actually speaking to the Greencastle manager recently, Paddy Duffy. He was saying that. Uh, for them, where they were in the Balmain League, it's too big a jump into intermediate because when you go in the intermediate league, the standards just massive difference. Where at least in the amateur league, you can work your way up throughout the junior divisions and build. And then when you get to there, you can start in the lower levels of intermediate football, and it's an easier it's an easier transition in the process rather than jumping from 
junior straight into intermediate in the Palomino League, which it made sense, and I suppose in your aspect as well, but also be the same thing where you're you said earlier you're quite a young team. So if your team's able to grow and gain experience for the next three years in the amateur league, then hopefully within maybe three, four years or whatever, you could be looking at going into two A and trying to push for intermediate football with a more experienced side. Well, yes, if they, if, yeah, same thing as normal, keeping them all together. But I think this year, the amateur league getting in has given us that wee bit of a thing now where Andrew and I as an amateur league club again. Yeah. So anybody that's interested in afternoon football, we'll be getting that. But at the minute, most of our club, most of my players are all Rovers players. They all come through the youth system. And there's very, very few outside that. But the team I remember winning the league, there might have been only four homegrown players in that. Yeah. But this year, for example, we I turned around and said, look, I don't want us going under 18 no more. I want us to get to the end of the 17s straight up in the reserves. I want these players learning as quickly as possible. And we had a lot of good young boys our 17s this year busting to get up in because we've used them in games. But yeah. I think the amateur league, it's like hitting the restart button, finding your level and then moving on from there. And yeah. the whole club's buzzing about getting in and to be honest with you, I think if somebody had told us we have to stay in our year and do what we're doing, I think there's a lot of deflated people, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, it's one we of the things as well. We have a very good secretary to the, the team in the club there, Sandra, that does all the paperwork and bits and pieces. And all. Whenever she's on the game, you normally get to where you need to go. Like, so yeah, it's, one, it's one of the things where now, now you, what you can do is it's, it's like a new adventure for everybody. It's new teams you're playing against every week. Like you said earlier, your reserve team are going to be getting games regularly, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, we've had a different sort of travelling involved, and it may be interesting for players to come into the club, new players, but also I'm sure it's exciting for all the, everybody involved in the club already. Oh, here, everybody's delighted about it. I mean, it's, I bet I had a few coaches with them humming and hawing about maybe staying next year, but I've been still in the same place because they're yeah. busting to go. I know the reserve team manager, he's jumping through hoops like he can't wait to get going because it was disappointing for him. Like I think they had only maybe played 14 league games this year. Like I mean that's a couple of cup games. It wasn't great. Yeah. You know yeah. we need to have games and a lot of games with Amateur League has to compete with these teams not. Yeah. Or it's just a continuous circle of losing players. Yeah. And then like you said earlier, it's 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 the competition between clubs as well and the Ultra Murray and there's that many clubs and players could easily just walk next door and play for another club if you don't keep them happy so it's trying to do that as well as be successful on the pitch the other thing about the Balamina League they carried that transfer window yes and you're up against the Saturday morning league they don't have a transfer window players could just walk away from me tomorrow and shoot into that team the following week wherefore I had maybe a couple of players looking to come to training and then when they got down they realised oh, you can't send me to January or I have to wait oh, oh. like I've lost out in a good forward there wanted to come back he's a Rovers youth there he went in our morning league team there because he couldn't sing. Yeah. He's enjoying it there now. He's going to stay. So. Or we could have had him and all. That's just the way it's working at the moment. It's hard then. Uh, yourself as well. I'm sure you're exce- you said earlier you played in amateur league, so I'm sure you're excited to get in. Like I think we, we spoke off camera. The last team in the amateur league early on to Murray was FC Ankelon, yeah. which was a long, long time ago Like as well. Well, they heard they, they got themselves into real great shape. Like, I, I remember it wasn't long after I came down. Or no, actually, before I came down to there, the, it's the time they had to draw at Windsor Park where they played Linfield and like a big 3-1 in the Irish yeah. Cup. And I remember them being a super side. Like, I mean, I played in the seconds. It was in the first the odd time. But back then, I found back then first and seconds teams were very, that's who they are, this is who they are. And they're, they're our own groups. Yeah, Alton Rovers as a club, I would say I I think of something every player at that club, whether it be a first or second, or the, even on our last friendly of the season before the like of the, our prize given. I mean, yeah. I tried to get a game on Thursday night to split them in half because there was that many of them available, and then they let me down. So I ended up going to the game on Saturday with twenty one players. The other team showed up to play us, revving for a game, and I was putting out two tens. And I mean, there were a mixture of there wasn't that many first team players. Yeah. We lost the game, everybody got a game, but the other team sort of reacted like we won some. But as long as the players get a game in that scenario, I'm happy enough. Like. Yeah. And then the other thing is as well, like I know you have a strong youth set up as well. So I'm sure he's actually got quite a lot of support as well throughout the club. And then you can carry that in the amateur league because it is there is more opportunity for 
up success. There's more opportunity for traveling, and there's more opportunity just to grow as a club overall. I think at, all, at the end it was all a no-brainer because yeah. most of the teams in the amateur league, the youth teams are playing against them teams in the South Half Yeah. You know, not a minor league night. Yes, there was a bit of traveling there too, like. But last year there was only nine in our division, so yeah. Your a game, your maximum amount of games for the season in the league is sixteen. If you don't have a few cup runs, like it's a short season. I know. And that it is like be, a team where we were struggling. It could be the other side where you play three games a week towards the end of the season. And then it's happened, the other side. Enough, there. <laughs> yeah. the end of the season, there, there, we had a Tuesday night game there. The only one we've had. I don't remember the last time we had that. We were meant to play Greencastle away. That was our last game. But I had 16 players ready to go. And we got a call at half four that Greencastle said they couldn't get a pitch. And that was the end of that. That was it. So I had to tell them, all right, boys, we're not going. We're just training tonight. Yeah, well, that's the only thing which is actually familiar next year. He's got to play against Greencastle again next year. They've been excited. I never heard well, who yeah. third team get in was, do you? Know? <laughs> uh, as from my knowledge, you have yourselves, you have Greencastle, uh, you have Celtic Boys down Patrick as well. well. I thought Celtic Boys to start a senior team when I originally yeah. heard that, but it's down Patrick. Yeah, down Patrick, it came from the Newcastle League. So yeah, it's a few, few different teams coming from different areas as well. Like, so it should be interesting. But uh, mate, uh, thanks very much for coming on, and uh, I wish you, I wish you all success for your club, and I hope that uh, your success on the track, or sorry, in the car, is transfers over to a football pits as well over the coming years for yourselves. Well, that's we're hoping that I like to win, and I have to put that in my lot too. Like, yeah, you remember second test. I know. <laughs> I thought I was a busy man too, mate, but that's a lot of work I have on the go but well done. Well, I'm actually taking a break early from it this year. I'm defending my world at home this year and then end of July and then taking a break. I pushed us into this new type of car, so to give myself yeah. time to sort it and concentrate on this new season and the new league, I don't want any distractions, yeah. so I'm concentrating on the football. So Brilliant. I'm taking my back, back seat. Uh, I'm sure the club will be glad to hear so. <laughs> Well, here, I make up one way or the other, so they're happy enough. Yeah. Mate, thank you very much for your time once again. And I, once I say it, like I said, well, I wish you best of luck. No problem. Thank you. I'm joined here by Connor Doyle from Clock FC. Connor, how's things, mate? You all good? All good, mate. All good, yeah. It's uh, good to have you on. I know it's a, it's a nice day outside, so um, thanks for staying off a drink for me for a Sunday night here. All right. Enough uh, yesterday. I know, I know. Uh, it, a good season from from what I could see. Like obviously, he's won the Newcastle League this year. Um, how would you assess your season? Um, no, it was a brilliant season. Uh, the club um, for years by other teams have been known as like a, a cup winning team. Sort of just gather gather ourselves to get into like when we get that quarter semi final, get a decent team, and then get a good run and win a and win a cup. Um, We've done that last year with the High Clark. So myself, Gareth and Kevin sat down before the season started and sort of set out goals off this year. Obviously, we wanted a good cup run, but our main priority was getting the league um, because we haven't won the league in 14 years. So our main priority to start the season was to try and get the league or get as close as possible. We missed out last year um, by three or four points. I was down to our own uh, stupidity and weren't able to beat the better teams in the league. So we just weren't good enough to win it last year. So... Um, we knew that league games came first and foremost. Um, we had to get win them, um, and that was the main that was the main objective. But also getting a cup run goal. Um, we didn't enter the junior cup this year because we thought last year that it sort of took us back a bit. Like you know, we were catching up games come Christmas and catching up games come the last Easter and stuff. So it was just too hard to do so we just, we just sort of totally focused on, on, on our own um on, on our own league this year within the two cups and the and the as especially the league so we got we got what we wanted um went on beating in a two um only dropped four points only drew twice all season so all in all it was a brilliant season for the for the club um by, by winning the league and doing it in such a dramatic fashion yeah i mean they're going on beating as well for for any team it's, it's some achievement especially if you are coming from not winning the league the year before, it's not as if you're winning leagues and then all of a sudden they say they won't beat and you've came from net challengers, then I completely just taking everybody out better route almost so you have. And 
who was your nearest challenger this year? Who who was your uh, toughest competitors, and what way did it finish? When what what way did it wrap up the league title? Um, our our nearest competitors were were Shelly Boys. Um, yeah. they they were only beat I think twice this year, and um, it was by us twice in the league, and then. I think they only, I only think they drew one or two maybe. So they were our, our, our fierce rivals. They were, they were closest um, rivals. Um, our class finished third. They'd be like a local rival to us. It's only two miles over the, over the road. So um, we played them the third last game and, and they took two points off us. Um, we were sitting in like a sort of half comfortable position because Celtic had drew the week before against Van der So we were sitting in a nice comfortable position. A win that night sort of would have more or less put the ice on the cake because Celtic would have had to come out and beat us. Yeah. Um, we still had to come and beat us anyway in clock because we, we drew our last we drew against our last and then we went and beat Dundrum so a, a win for Shatley would have drew them level with us but on the last that was the last day of the season the first night in our place we had them and we knew that a point done us so they had to come out at us and we went and beat them uh, 2-1 on the night um, we played Magic for 70 minutes and then sort of they they sort of were pushing for the game and that's why football goes. You know, so yes. they they sort of get better the uh, the better chances. But on the night we played our game a fast paced game. Um and we were brilliant for the for the for the duration of the game. Yes, they were they were good for twenty minutes and we we're always they're always good for the first twenty minutes, especially against us. For right up until that game, every time we've played them in the last two seasons, I think it's been seven times or six times maybe they've went two 0 up against us in the first fifteen minutes. So we knew at the start, going out that game, we cannot we have to be switched on from 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 the first whistle. We can't go again, go behind two goals behind because it's too big of a mountain to climb, especially in the league game that is for the title. So yeah. the they had to, they, if they had to beat us, um, it probably would have went to the playoff because it does go to goal difference in our league. Um, right. But they had to come out and beat us to draw a level. So we knew that we sort of could hit them on the counter and. Yeah. Run possession, and that's what we've done. And we've done it very well. And um, all everybody, I, everybody on the night, the eleven boys started, and the three boys come on, done a magic job, just of soaking up the pressure and, and being able to, been able to get over the line for us. Um, even the game we beat them earlier on the season, they were two up against us, and we come back and beat them three two, thankfully. But we didn't let it slip at all on the last night of the season, and thankfully we're victorious and got the day ten yeah. back to clock. It, it's one of them things now where now you're your champion saying it's it's where do you go from here what do you look at what's your challenges for next year obviously Celtic boys are, have now went to the, the amateur league so yeah. uh, who is is it our glass you're looking at next year as your main competitors or and Battle Groffs will be very very strong next year um, I think if Caswell and stay if Caswell and get a couple of players in they could be challenged and Strangford are very very good Strangford are sort of like what we were like a couple of years ago of Getting a good a cup run goal, and um, they got them the both cup runners here. They beat us in a Harry Clark, and they beat yeah. Battle of in the Bobby Giselle, or they could beat by Battle of the Bobby Giselle. So they are a very good strong side. If they can keep their sort of team together for the full season, the t- the, bo- the team that played against us, they would come close. They would run us close, and the same with Catswell. And they're sort of a makeshift team sometimes because boys are getting pulled away to the first team and and and, and Gaelic and Hurling and stuff, and that's the same yeah. strike for they both Gaelic and Hurling. So for the first six games, I think they only picked up two points this year. So and they still finished well. So it's like it's them getting their their team out, their game out, or their a team out for every game. Um, and for us, I think it's just more of what we were doing. If we do the same thing and only drop four points, I don't think anybody could catch us again. Yeah. So yeah, I suppose next season then as well. Not only is you have a target you're back now, where you were the you were the team trying to win the league for the first time in 14 years now everyone's looking at you guys but then I suppose the other motivation is is you could try and win the league again but also try and do that wee bit more by you said earlier we're a cup team previously do you yeah. think next season you'll be able to become just triumphant in all three competitions or well it, you know, as you know yourself it is very difficult to do that um, yes as we said to be a successful team um, to be a, a very good team you have to be challenged at all times to try and win everything you just don't go out just to play in a, in a competition you want to go out yeah. and, and win it um, I would like I would like personally to myself we'll have them sat down we're going to sit down next week and sort of have to figure out our goals and see what happens but personally I would like to get a wee bit further in the junior sheet junior cup competitions because you are playing the best of the best and you're 
uh, in your division type thing um, throughout the north of Ireland. So um, I would love to give one of them a good rattle. But again, it's very difficult because boys playing junior football, Newcastle League football, even amateur league football, um, they have jobs, they have families. So it is very difficult trying to get somebody gathered up at 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning to travel to uh, Ballymena. You know what I mean? So yeah. if the draw falls well for you, all well and good. But um, I would love to give one of them a good rattle and just try and give uh, try and get far in the competition. Like the furthest we have got to the last 16. So we'd like to get to like a quarter quarter final, semi final, and, and really get up with the best in the in junior football in, in Northern Ireland. Yeah, it's not just for yourselves as well. It's also to show how strong the league is as well, because there is some yeah. good sides in the Newcastle League, but it maybe doesn't get the same recognition as the like say the amateur league or the Balmain Saturday morning league when it comes to junior shields and cup competitions. So yeah. I'm sure it's something you just want to. But then. A, a good old cup run as well is, isn't bad if you get a bus run every night again also. So no, it's it is good crack. No, it is good old crack as you get somebody coming down. It's, it's good old yeah. crack after it's up. So, um, that, that is, it's, it's, it, that's what junior football is about. It's enjoying yourself too. Like, I, know, I, I know myself, I'm quite particular with the boys drinking on Friday night. Some of them <laughs> like yeah. to get a habit of car on a Friday, Friday night. So we sort of try to stamp that out because you see the, the benefits this year um, when they don't drink. For, for previous years when they had a couple and you know yourself and a couple go leads on to a couple too many so yeah. coming hanging on Saturday one so it's been you're trying to balance it because you're you're not you're not a professional outfit you're you're only a an amateur or an amateur, amateur outfit so you're trying to balance it right and sort of you don't want to be uptight because then that's how you lose boys because they're saying well I'm not playing this and go somewhere else and have a few pints on a Saturday night and or Friday night and go and join the football on a Saturday so it's just trying to work with the boys. Yeah, L- long term is the t- is the club's aim to stay in the Newcastle League and keep progressing, keep challenging for trophies every year, or is there other ideas for the club going forward? Or well, well, myself, Kevin, Gareth, we sort of are looking at um before we want to move anywhere, any arms league or anything is is trying to be dominant in our own division first, um because it is tricky. People think oh they're only going to play two C's or twenty two C, two C has some very very good to say to yeah. it, um. And then obviously two B and two A and stuff and, and moving up. So there's no point in getting in after winning one a cup one year and a league title the next year and thinking now oh, you're gonna go up and, and do things. So you wanna be dominant yeah. and work and want, you wanna breed success first and foremost and then we can move. So like we've got three, four years here now. Hopefully they get um a good uh, winning mentality bred into the boys and then we can maybe look at that. Uh, we need to get our pitch and stuff updated because it wouldn't be amateur league standard. You could probably yeah. go 2C, 2B with it, but I would rather have it all in place so that there's, there's no complications if you go and win 2C or 2B that you're not able to, to progress and, and be promoted. So, And then you're stuck in a rut there. So, you know, what's the point of winning the league if you can't go up? So yeah. it, there is a lot of... Being a local team playing on, on a council pitch, there's a lot of complications with just with moving. It's not just as easy as, as a plan, getting there and then moving up. So there is the club have struggled to try and get the development of the of the facility updated to um, and modernized so um we can only do what we can do as managers at the minute yeah. and then once that comes into fruition then we can sort of look and think well can we move up and can we start challenging at the best of junior and then move, maybe move into inter- intermediate football yeah the thing is as well like obviously you want you want to improve your facilities you want to improve your club anyway no matter where you play or what league you're playing in but the new Castle league is going to get strong over the next couple of years because you've obviously our glass have moved from intermediate football and then they're going to keep getting stronger, you'd imagine. And then it's seen that Patrick FC have moved after yeah. just recently being an intermediate team. So the Newcastle League itself is going to be stronger. But then the flip side of it is you think sometimes the grass is greener and then them clubs are having to drop down and come back. So it is it is something that obviously has to be weighed up before any decisions are made. Yeah, it is indeed. Um, I know I know. for previous I managed to catch well for a couple of years and mm-hmm. we played 2B and... Um, it is a long day leaving, especially for the clubs down this side of the down this side. It's okay if you're if you're cross bar, strum and S type sort of area because just you're only 15, 20 minutes outside Belfast, really, especially yeah. that type of Saturday afternoon. But you're leaving, you're 45 minutes, 50 minutes to, out to Belfast, you're hitting the traffic and stuff and carried off. Do you know, it's it is an all day thing. Do you know, you're leaving yeah. maybe half 10, 11 o'clock in the morning and you're not getting back to six or seven o'clock in the evening. Um, I know some ways wouldn't be happy with that, especially. So, um, it is it is a, it is a a big commitment to go. So, but 
the likes of Arglass and Dow Paddock coming coming back, um, Arglass back a couple of years and Dow Paddock back this year, they will draw in talent from other clubs yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. Um, like Dow Paddock at the minute, they're they've got a very very good setup. Um, they've got a very good a good setup coming through, and they have a very 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 uh a lot of very very good young talent playing for the first team at the minute. Um, we might find it a wee bit more difficult moving up in division this year. But there's no doubt in two, three years' time when they, the boys have, uh, have played a couple of years in the Premier Division that they won't be tra- challenging us in our glass and Val Gross and, and them types of teams. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, uh, thanks very much for giving up your time. We really appreciate it. And uh, no worries, it's great yeah. to have you on. You're your first club I have had from your league in. So uh, it's great to have you on and also Shane Lane on the Newcastle League as well, the NA listeners and viewers. So um, I wish you best of luck going forward, mate. I really do. Thank you very much. All the best, bye. Cheers, man.